Hi, the latest 5.5 .5 release of Simlab's Virtual Directory Server now includes SASL GSAPI support to enhance your connectivity options by allowing you to authenticate and connect to Kerberos-enabled backend directories. For Microsoft Windows users, this will vastly improve Active Directory integration, as Kerberos is the default authentication and encryption method used in these environments. By using the SASL GSAPI mechanism provided with Virtual Directory Server, you can improve the security of your LDAP communications without resorting to using TLS or SSL. Active Directory administrators may already be aware of the complexity of setting up SSL under Windows and have probably already seen the performance hit that this sort of configuration has on Active Directory. Since Active Directory limits the types of operations that can be performed on particular attributes when a connection is unencrypted, using GSAPI will allow you full control over the data stored in your Active Directory server. In this video, we will discuss how you can set up a Virtual Directory Server instance to connect to a backend Active Directory Server using GSAPI. We will try to keep the configuration as simple as possible so that you can focus on the steps required to achieve this functionality, but keep in mind that you can use any of the other functionality available in Virtual Directory Server in conjunction with the GSAPI enabled backend. Let's start out by creating a simple pass-through proxy configuration. To do this, we will create a single server group in the output part of our configuration. All we need to do here is specify the IP address of the Active Directory server that we are connecting to and the port that Active Directory listens on. Now we can create a listener in the input part of the configuration. We specify the port on which the Virtual Directory Server instance should listen for requests and we specify the default server group. With this configuration, we can handle standard LDAP connectivity. So now we need to configure the server group to interact with Active Directory using SASL GSAPI. To do this, we simply go back to the server group and click on the SASL tab. Click on the SASL enabled checkbox and leave the default settings as they are. Now let's set up a connection pool. Click on the connection pooling tab and click on the use connection pooling checkbox. And finally select the use SASL option to handle the authentication. That's pretty much all we need to do to configure the virtual directory server instance. So let's save it and we will come back to it in a moment. In order for this configuration to work Virtual Directory Server will rely on the MIT Kerberos libraries to handle the encryption and authentication of the LDAP connection. This instance is running on a Linux system, so we simply installed the library files from the default software repository. But before we can get our Virtual Directory Server up and running, we will need to provide some basic configuration information to the Kerberos libraries. This is done by editing the etc krb5.conf file. If we open this configuration file in an editor, you can see that we have provided some very basic configuration variables. First, we have created a section called libdefaults and have used this to specify the default Kerberos realm that should be used when opening connections. For Active Directory, this is the same as your domain name, so it's pretty easy to set up. Next, in the Realm section, we define the KDC, or Key Distribution Center, for each defined Kerberos Realm. Once again, this is relatively easy, since the KDC in Active Directory is usually the same system as the domain controller. What is important here is that you need to specify the host name and domain name, and the system that is running the VDS needs to be able to resolve this to an IP address. On this system, we have simply added an entry in our etc hosts file for this server. Finally, in the domain realm section, you simply define mappings between potential domain names and the Kerberos realm that should be used to authenticate for these domains. And that's all that's required by Kerberos. Now, for the virtual directory server to work, 
we just need to authenticate against the Windows Domain Controller from this host. The MIT Kerberos suite comes with a tool that makes this process pretty easy. From the command line or shell, we just need to run kinit or kinit with the user that we want to connect as and enter the password for that user. That's it. This host has now been given a ticket that will allow it to encrypt its connections with Active Directory. If we go back to the DS GUI, we can start our configuration. Behind the scenes, Virtual Directory Server will open a pool of connections to the backend Active Directory Server. Each of these connections will be authenticated using the credentials that we provided with the Kinet tool, and the connections will be encrypted between the two systems so that they are safe to use. Let's open the free Simlabs LDAP browser that is bundled with Virtual Directory Server version 5.5 and connect to the listener interface of our pass-through proxy configuration. We simply enter the credentials that we wish to bind with and select the suffix or base DN that we want to browse. Now we can connect and you can see that we are able to browse the directory tree. This is great because it means that you can easily integrate LDAP applications that are unable to use Kerberos right into your Active Directory infrastructure and provide them with full access to the directory. With the appropriate plugin or custom script, you can even facilitate password modification requests using any standard LDAP client. If you need to protect your client connections, you can easily create an SSL listener in your virtual directory configuration and take the load off your back-end Active Directory.